back to this video series on trees and tree-based data structures. In this part, we develop binary trees further into general purpose collection data structures that offers the potential for efficient operations. A binary search tree is a binary tree that stores unique keys in its nodes. Further, it has the property that for every node U with key K, one, every node in U's left subtree has a key value strictly less than K, and two, every node in U's right subtree has a key value strictly greater than K. The general idea is illustrated here. Some notes on our definition. Our definition does not allow duplicate key values in our tree. This restriction can be relaxed as long as we're consistent on which way we break ties, that is left or right. In addition, in our presentations we will restrict key values to be non-negative integer values. In practice, neither of these restrictions are that big of a deal. Typically, key values are derived using some hash function that maps a state of an object to a non-negative integer. Moreover, if we have objects that are otherwise equal, we can break ties arbitrarily, say using a memory address or some other criterion. It is also important to understand that the definition of a binary search tree is an inductive property. The binary search tree property holds not just for the root, but for every node in the entire tree. This gives us more structure that we can potentially exploit. Here's a larger concrete example of a binary search tree. At the root we have 50, and you can see that every node in its left subtree is less than 50, and every node in its right subtree is greater than 50. The same property holds for every node in the tree. For example, deeper in the tree, we have the key value 20. Again, every node in the left subtree has a value less than 20, and every value in the right subtree has a value greater than 20. We'll work off this example as we develop our operations further. In particular, we want to develop this idea into a general purpose collection data structure. To do that, we need the ability to efficiently retrieve or search for elements, insert new elements, and delete existing ones. We'll start with retrieval, which gives binary search trees their name. Suppose that we want to search for a particular key value k. As with all traversal strategies that we've seen so far, we'll start at the root. At any given node, we compare its key value to k. If they're equal, we stop as it represents a successful search. Otherwise, we exploit the binary search tree property. If the key that we're searching for is less than the current node's key value, we traverse to its left child. Alternatively, if the key that we are searching for is greater than the node's key value, we traverse to its right child. We continue this strategy until we've found the key that we're searching for, or we reach the end of the tree, past a leaf node, implying an unsuccessful search. Let's demonstrate this idea with a few searches on our binary search tree. Suppose that we wish to search for the node containing 24. We start at the root. 24 is less than 50, so we traverse left. We compare the next node, 40. And again, 24 is less, so we traverse left again. This time, 24 is greater than 20, so we traverse right. On the next key comparison, we successfully find the node containing 24. In all, only four node key comparisons were made to find 24. Here's another example. Suppose that we wish to search for 12. The same process would take us to 20, but instead of going to right at that point, we would go left as 12 is less than 20. Comparing it to 10, we would then traverse to the right. 12 is less than 15, so we traverse left. And we ended in a successful search, having made six key comparisons. As a final example, let's search for 55. We compare with the root and see that we need to traverse right this time. Comparing to 60, we find that we need to go left. However, we've reached the end of the tree. This is an example of an unsuccessful search. Here we only made two key comparisons to determine that 55 was not in the tree. In contrast, if we were searching for, say, 50, we would immediately find it on our first key comparison. Thus, the total number of key comparisons for both successful and unsuccessful searches can vary depending on the structure of the binary search tree. Here we present the pseudocode for the search algorithm we just described. We initialize a node variable to the tree's root. Then we set up a loop that traverses left or right until it finds the node that it's, we're looking for. 
The termination condition stops the loop if we ever reach the end of the tree, resulting in an unsuccessful search. Inside the loop, we compare the key that we're searching for to the current node's key value. If equal, we stop and output the node. Otherwise, if the search key is less than the node's key, we traverse left, updating our node variable. The last condition here is not explicitly necessary, but we include it for presentation's sake. If the search key is larger than the current node's key, we traverse right, updating the current node's variable value to the right child. Let's implement this in Java. For simplicity, we'll restrict our binary search tree so that it only stores and compares integer types. To do this, I've extended our binary tree class that we developed in our prior videos. Here it extends a binary tree, but again, for simplicity, we'll only compare integer types. I've also modified the visibility of the root variable in the binary tree class so that we can access it in this class. First, we'll take a cue from our previous lessons and design and implement a general purpose method that searches for and returns a tree node containing a given key value. We'll make the method private as we don't want our code outside the class direct access to the tree nodes. Our while loop will incorporate both termination conditions in one. The case where we reach the end of the tree, and the case where we find the node that we're looking for. Now that we have this method, we can use it in a public search method. You may notice that this method is somewhat useless. If we pass a given key to this method, we simply get it back unless the key is not stored in the tree, in which case we get null. Keep in mind that in practice, we would not just be storing integer values in our tree. A full implementation would allow any type of variable to be stored, and we would use a comparator to determine the equality and whether or not we should go left or right. We're keeping this implementation simple to illustrate the concepts. Let's test this method. I've written code that reproduces the binary search tree example that we've been using. Let's search for nodes 12, 24, and 55 and see the results. Our method works and it matches the structure of our tree. We can further test this by executing an in-order traversal that we implemented in the superclass. This should produce a sorted list of all of our key values. And it works. And now for our analysis. The elementary operation here is simply the key comparison. In our actual code, we compare for equality and then inequality if we need to traverse left or right. However, it's generally better to analyze algorithms with respect to a single comparison. That is, these two comparisons can be treated as one. This is because in practice, we would be using a comparator that returns zero, a negative value, or positive value, depending on the relative ordering of the node keys. We would use this value to determine which actions to take, but ultimately, we would be making a single call to the comparator method. As we saw with the examples, the complexity for a search depends on the structure of the tree. Some searches require fewer comparisons, while others require more. In the best case, we could get away with a single comparison if we got lucky and found our node at the root. However, in general, the worst case, and in fact the average case, we would need to explore to the deepest parts of the tree. In general, we may need to make D comparisons where D is the depth of the tree. 
Thus the complexity can be characterized as order d rather than in terms of the number of nodes of the tree. We'll return to this idea after we've looked at the other operations. The next operation is inserting a new node. The first step is to simply find where the new node should be. For that, we simply reuse the same basic search algorithm that we just developed. If we find that the key value is already in the tree, we can reject it either through a no-op, throwing an exception, or returning a flag variable. Otherwise, we'll insert it. The key difference is that in addition to traversing nodes, we'll keep track of a previous node. That way, when we reach the end of the tree, we'll still have a reference to the previous node, which will become the parent of the new node. To finish it out, we create a new node and add it as either the left child or the right child of the previous node. We leave developing the pseudocode as an exercise. However, we will demonstrate an implementation for insertion in our Java binary search tree. I've already provided a method signature. We'll use the return value to indicate whether or not the operation had an effect. If the key is already in the tree, we do nothing, but communicate this with a false value. First, we need to take care of a corner case. When the tree is empty, we simply create a new root node. We return true to indicate that it had an effect. Now let's rewrite our searching algorithm, but also keep track of a previous node. We'll also stop and return false if we ever encounter a duplicate. After this loop terminates, the previous node will have a valid reference to the node that needs to be the new parent. So let's create a new node. And set its parent to the previous node. Now we need to add it as either the left child or the right child, so we do one more comparison. Finally, we return true to indicate that the method modified the tree. Let's test this by inserting 55 and then searching for it. We would expect it to be the new left child of 60. And it is. This looks like it works, but it does need a lot more testing. The analysis of insertion is similar to searching. The first phase has us searching for the correct spot to insert the new node, which we had already determined to be order D. Creating the new node and shuffling a few references is a constant operation, which is order 1. Combined, the whole algorithm is order D. Deleting or removing a node is a little bit more involved. Of course, we first need to find the node to delete it, and if it's not in the tree, we can choose to handle this error case as before. Once we've found the node to delete, we want to remove it, but we want to preserve the binary search tree property. We also want to cause as little disruption as possible to the structure of the tree. Inducing large structural changes can be error prone and provides more potential points of failure and bugs. More importantly, we want to keep the operation efficient, which necessarily means keeping it simple. Let's take a look at several cases. Here's our example from before. Suppose that we wanted to delete the node containing the key 2. First we have to find it. And now we need to delete it. 
Since it has no children, simply removing it will cause little disruption in the tree. To do this, we only need to change the left child reference of its parent node. Setting it to null or some other flag variable would remove the node from the tree. Here's another case. Let's delete 45. Once we've found it, we observe that it has only one child, a right child in this case. We cannot simply remove it, as the subtree rooted at 49 would then be pruned from the tree and all the data lost. However, we can easily preserve it by promoting it up to where 45 currently is. To do this, we need to shuffle a couple of references around to make 45 40's new right child. This is very similar to how we performed a delete operation in a linked list. Now let's take a look at a more complex third case, where the node that we want to delete has two children. Let's attempt to delete the root node itself, 50. We might be tempted to observe that since its right child, 60, only has one child, we can promote it up to be the new root. In this particular case, that would work. However, it would not work in general, say, if there were a tree hanging off of it as the left child of 60. So what do we do? We want to cause as little disruption as possible, which means that we want to shift nodes around as little as possible. If we look at all the descendants of 50, say restricting it into the left subtree, there's exactly one key that we could promote up to 50 and still preserve the binary search tree property. 49 is that node. Since if we promote it up to where 50 is, all the nodes in the left subtree are still less than it, and all the nodes in the right subtree are still greater than it. Of course, we don't want to keep duplicate keys of 49, so we simply delete it by promoting its child up. Why did this work? We chose 49 because it was the largest value in the left subtree. That is, the largest value among values that are less than the root node. Equivalently, we could have done the same operation with the smallest node in the right subtree. This is because of the binary search tree property that guarantees the relative ordering of nodes and its inductive nature. Now, to find the maximum value in the left subtree, we simply have to traverse to the left child, then traverse right until we reach the end of the tree. Not only that, but we can safely delete the node with no worries as it's guaranteed to have at most one child. Suppose not, suppose it actually had a right child as well as a left child. That means that it's actually not the maximum value as the right child must necessarily be larger. Thus by traversing all the way to the right, we're guaranteed that there is either one or no child and we already know how to deal with that situation. There's several steps in this algorithm. To find the node is order D as before. To find the min or the max it, to replace it with is simply also order D. Replacing the deleted node and deleting the old max or min are both constant operations as they're just a few reference shuffles. Thus, in total, the whole algorithm is order D. The pseudocode and implementations are left as an exercise. However, we will demonstrate a part of it. Given a node, let's find the maximum value in the binary search tree rooted at that node. The basic idea is that we start at R. While our current node still has a right child, we traverse to it. In the end, we return the rightmost child rooted at R. Let's quickly test this. The largest key node value from our example was 95. For all three operations, the elementary operations were key comparisons. All three were proportional to the depth of the tree, giving us order D. Now this differs from our previous analyses of algorithms in that the complexity is not in terms of the data structure's input size, but rather depends on the structure itself. As we observed before, if we have a more or less full tree, the depth would be logarithmic. 
then D would be order log n, and thus all three operations can be said to be logarithmic. If this is the case, then we've achieved our goal. We would have a general purpose collection data structure that offered efficient logarithmic complexity for all three basic operations. Unfortunately, this is not true in general. Recall this degenerate or skewed tree. Here we have 10 nodes, but every one of them has at most one child. The depth is nine. In general, the depth of a binary search tree can be up to n minus one. Thus, the depth could be order n, and all three of our operations would then become linear. There is hope, however. There's an entire class of balanced binary search trees. These data structures rearrange themselves upon insertion and deletion operations to guarantee that the depth remains logarithmic. This is achieved in several different ways by different implementations. AVL trees, B trees, red black trees, splay trees, and treeps are all balanced binary search trees, just to name a few. We won't go into the details in this lecture series. However, it's important to understand that binary search trees can guarantee efficient operations. In practice, you would not roll your own binary search tree or balanced binary search tree. You would want to use the implementations provided by your language or library. Java, for example, provides a sorted set interface. One implementation is a tree set, which provides a red-black balanced binary search tree implementation, guaranteeing order log n for all three basic operations. It uses either a comparator or a natural ordering to determine the relative ordering of nodes, so it's not just restricted to integer keys. We may have fallen a bit short of our ultimate goal of providing a general purpose efficient data structure. However, in our next lesson, we will look at a binary tree based data structure that does offer efficiency guarantees. A heat data structure guarantees order log n and operations. But like a stack in a queue, it's a restricted access data structure that restricts how we can insert and retrieve elements. Nevertheless, the heaps are very important and have numerous applications.